All right, so we are back for another episode of Colonizing Duna, and in this episode we will be focusing on getting a base on the surface of Ike, which is Duna's moon. So if you're just tuning into the series, in the first episode we sent a rover, which is roving on the surface. Then we sent a space station, which is in orbit. Then we uh, put a lander down there, which we'll be using to get back and forth from the space station to the surface. And then we sent this base, which is also on the surface. But anyways, we're going to hop back into the VAB and get started building this Ike base. I'm going to try to keep this one a little simple. This isn't going to be the main base for Duna, obviously, because the Duna base is the main base. So this will just be kind of like a, you know, useful little Ike base that uh, can be used for various things. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get a base on Ike just because. I'm going to keep this just a, a single launch base. We're just going to try to keep things as efficient as possible. I've actually been working on my uh, transfer windows for just getting encounters while still in orbit around celestial bodies instead of a, a solar orbit or a Kerbal orbit. So you will see that in this video as well. Ends up saving quite a bit of uh, Delta V to get to Duna. So that was definitely nice. Uh, I definitely ran tight as you will see later. Like very tight. So uh, take note of that and then try to remember when I land and look how much Delta V I have left. But anyways, back to the base. Um, it's going to have plenty of crew capacity as you can see. Uh, we're just building a antenna tower for comms. I go back and forth with a few different designs as you can see here. But that's with most designs I go with in P KSP. They all constantly changing and you know. So I go ahead and tuck these engines up here. Those are going to be what gives that last little burst to slow me down like right as I'm on, on the surface. So beyond that we are building this which is going to be our booster for once we are out of or, or into orbit rather. And then we are going to come down to our main stage and we're once again we're just going to keep this simple with a one engine KSP2 really likes simple so I've been trying to just kind of keep things simple. We're going to go ahead and throw some lights on here so we can see on the dark side of Ike when we go around to it. So with all this, we're going to go ahead and mark the antenna tower so any aircraft don't hit that. <laughs> and then we are going to finalize this with building a fairing that will hopefully protect all our parts from being ripped off. All right, perfect. So we'll throw back the main booster on. Give this sucker some control and hop on over to the launch pad. All right, so this actually has a kind of low thrust to weight ratio. It's obviously above one, but yeah. So we're just going to speed things up so it's not super long as always. Uh, it actually flies great. There's a there's a little bit of wiggle, but main, mainly that was me just trying to keep it in that optimal angle. For our approach into orbit, I like to be about 90 degrees parallel with the surface by about 30,000 meters. So we're we hit that pretty good. Then we're just going to speed things up to get to those final burns we have to do to just you know finish off our our orbit to to get us into a stable orbit of at least 75,000 which is what I like to shoot for in KSP2 
And the reason I say in KSP2 explicitly is because in KSP1, 72,000 I found was my sweet spot. You know, it's, you're not using any extra. It's very negligible amount of extra, but there is a little bit of wasted. Waste the Delta V if you go higher than that. But anyways, back to the mission. What I'm doing here is I'm just warping to a transfer window. I'm actually put a vessel on the launch pad so I can get that full time warp. As you can see, I'm back in the Ike base now and you don't get that full time warp while you're still in low curb in orbit so that's why i hopped over to the runway or launch pad rather so as you can see this is uh this is me just checking out how we're doing on our tra transfer window which we're still a little behind we are behind duna which is what we want to be but we need to be a little closer so we want to be behind it because we are actually going faster with our lower orbit we're going faster so we will catch up to it as we shoot out and get that encounter so i was just actually adjusting my transfer well my positioning is in relation to duna there uh, just a bit, and it gives me this better transfer window to where I am able to get this encounter while still in orbit from in Kerbin. All right, so we'll just dial this in. And there we go. There's our encounter. I don't actually get it perfect on this burn, so we do have to go back and make minor adjustments to our uh, trajectory there, just to bring it in. I think I go a little too far. So we are going to kick our fairing and then speed things up to just get this burn over with. All right, so we just used the last little bit of Delta V we had in our main stage. As you will see, it was completely necessary to do so. All right, we exit out of the maneuver just to eyeball that last little bit, which I went too far. So I'll just kind of see what I need to do here about that. We'll just exit out of that and then warp out of the influence of Kerbin and then burn retrograde a little bit. There we go. All right, we can warp out to our encounter. And then down to the periapsis. And then do our retrograde burn. All right, we'll go ahead and speed things up. There we go. Then we can uh, fix our inclination here a little bit. Once again, just kind of seeing what I need. Go over here, burn anti-normal. Warp a little farther and then just eyeball this until we get our uh, inclination where we need it. All right, perfect. All right, so we'll start bringing our orbit in so we can get our encounter with Ike. That looks good enough. Okay, we'll dial it in here. There we go. 
Oh, we're actually in a crash trajectory there, so we'll uh, adjust that. Okay. Almost went too far, but we are here at our periapsis of our Ike encounter. We will do a retrograde burn. And then uh, we'll aim to uh, land on the, the light side of Ike. This can be a little easier with the terrain. As you will see, Ike is uh, not very flat. Very mountainous. Okay, we'll bring it in nice and easy. We're down to our last little bit of a uh, Delta V here. Which ends up being about the perfect amount. Well, we landed on this hill here, so I'll, uh, I'll try to do a little finagling to get it up on the up the hill and onto that flat spot. As I said, uh, Ike is very hilly and mountainous, so it's hard to find a flat spot. Okay, I'll just go ahead and use this last little bit of uh, Delta V I have to help me out. This was uh, completely unintentional, but it worked out, so we'll just go ahead and wheel this thing up the hill, and then thanks to Ike's very low gravity, we can just set this right back up. All right, there we go. That is our Ike base. And those lights are way too bright right now. Go ahead and get these panels extended so our batteries don't die. Go for an EVA, plant a flag. And then that is all for today's episode. So as always, I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. So until next time.